Hey guys, we're outside. It's uh, getting pretty cold outside. If you can take a look, right now it's about oh about 48 degrees out here. Um, we're close to winter. It's uh, it's about December December 10th today, I believe. And I've moved the main cabinet outside. It's been forever. It's been months since I've worked on the main cabinet. And I said, Dad, burn it. I'm gonna try to start working on it again. Uh, pretty much the last things we did, besides maybe buying some parts, is putting laminate on the cabinet. That's one of the last things you guys seen. And uh, I just need to get to work on this thing. I need to get to reinforcing it, making it stronger. Uh, got the control panel out here. All this stuff has been sitting in the house getting dusty. And uh, I'm gonna blow it out with my air hose and clean this all up real good. And I'm gonna start working on it. Um, I'm gonna try to uh, put us some reinforcing pieces in there. Something to just make the cabinet more rigid across maybe either across here and across the front because we had a piece cut for the front and I think I went back and used it for the control panel and stuff so I may have to cut a new piece for that but we need to put some uh, some pieces right here going all the way across to help support the control panel and to make the cabinet more rigid and uh, this piece right here that used to have the old speaker in it it's probably gonna go away and I'm probably gonna use this piece since it's the right width maybe as a couple of uh, supports in the middle of the cabinet and I'm going to put a new piece across the front right here uh, right where the bottom of the marquee is and um, it'll probably end up either covered in black laminate or painted black it, you won't see but let me get around to see here you won't see but uh, probably about two or three inches of it across here so we don't need this going all the way back here where the speaker is anymore. You know, I don't think I'm going to salvage this for that though. I'm just going to cut a new piece because I got a piece inside that has this correct angle on it from something else I was doing. But uh, right now I'm just going to get my air hose and, and just blow this out. You may not be able to tell, but this thing is just, it's just dusty. I got dust caked up on there. It's right after fall, so leaves are still on the porch. But it is dusty. It's just been sitting in there collecting dust. and. Uh, I told my wife I want to start working on this in the next few days if I can. So anyway, let's get to work on this, and uh, you know I'll, I'll show you some of the things we do after we clean it up. Hey guys, this is the uh, monitor we're going to use in the main cabinet. This is the one that I did a tube swap from a television, and I've got a K7400 chassis mated to it on the old frame from an old, very old K7000 that I got from a fella. Well, I decided since this doesn't need an isolation transformer, of course I'm going to use it. Plus, I have the advantage now, this came from a 25 inch television, this tube is much shallower than my old one. So when you get down kind of eye level, the neck board just extends past those brackets about an inch. And uh, it used to extend, if you, if you look right there, there's only about an inch more clearance needed for the neck board. And, um, you can tell this old cardboard template, I'd made it out of a pizza box. <laughs> And it's starting to bow on me. But anyway, up top I had added, well didn't add, I just left this piece on. That was for the neck board on the old monitor. Well now, I get to take that whole two inches away and I've measured it up. And if this is pressed flat against the monitor, that right there is all the clearance you need. It's just like an extra inch past the brackets there. So I get to take off that whole two inches. That gives me two more inches. So I'm going to have about two and three quarters maybe at the most three inches of clearance at the front of the monitor to make a bezel or to buy a bezel and that's actually enough clearance to put like a 25 inch bezel from like a Mortal Kombat or something in so if I can get my hands on one of those I won't have to make my own bezel but every time I see those go on eBay they go for like shoot anywhere from uh, 30 to about fifty dollars you know but if you get lucky and find somebody parting the game out they don't want but about twenty bucks you'll probably get lucky but we may end up making one if not you know, we'll just do whatever we need to do. We'll buy one or something. All right, guys, I got the main cabinet back inside. I've completely dusted out. got it nice and clean so I can start getting it dirty again. No, actually, I just wanted it good and clean because it was dusty sitting in here. And I had all the spare pieces of wood and, and uh, spare pieces of uh, the laminate and all thrown in there. And it had just been sitting for months and uh, just making me sick. So... <laughs> I got my laminate, extra pieces of laminate out here, and uh, the control panel, and some of that extra wood, and that uh, monitor. And uh, right now, I I need to start doing a couple of things. I need to start putting some reinforcing uh, pieces of wood in there to make this cabinet much stronger. Because right now, I mean, it just wobbles 
left and right wobbles out and back real easy you know but uh, it's because it has nothing going out and back you know to uh, give it any rigidity or anything so got some pieces of wood I'm going to use for that I want to cut a few extra pieces here and there and I'm going to mimic some of the stuff that Midway did with some of their cabinets probably around the control panel area to give it some reinforcing so I could uh, set the control panel that I made the box on there I'm going to take this piece out like I said probably use some of this wood in some places as reinforcement put another little piece right up here across the front it's only going to extend a few inches down just enough so that it'll go back to where the uh, face of the monitor is maybe maybe another couple of inches and uh, this area up here I might close it in some to give uh, better reflectiveness off that fluorescent tube that light that we're going to put behind the marquee but uh, I'll find a way to do that. I, I want to leave the inside as cavernous as possible for mounting of circuit boards and stuff like that and any kind of future customizations I want to do but I, I still want it to be pretty strong so when I move it around it's not wobbling around monitor is not going to fall out of it because it's a much larger monitor than this cabinet was originally designed for but um, like I'm saying, I've, I cut that piece off this little template to uh, give me something else to go by so I can see you know, how the monitor is going to fit in here. And let me hold this up real quick. Now, originally, that was kind of how the monitor was going to sit inside the cabinet. If you can just imagine you know, the side of the, the monitor, it was going to sit like that. And I was only going to have maybe half an inch to three quarters of an inch of clearance at the front because the neck board, that extra piece that I cut off of this template, was going to extend all the way to the back of the cabinet. And, you know, didn't want to break the neck off the tube. But now, if you take a look, we've got like an extra, you know, it is like almost three inches back there that we've got to play with. So this right here, it can move back a whole lot farther. So we may have room for like a Mortal Kombat style bezel and I actually have my Mortal Kombat slightly taken apart in the next room and I can use that bezel as something to go by and if I find one on eBay or somebody has a spare one I can buy off of them I'll, I can go by the one on my Mortal Kombat when I'm designing how this monitor is going to mount in here and uh, it'll be a perfect fit by the time I get this all designed and done but uh, the Mortal Kombat monitor right now I believe I need an, uh, a new flyback transformer for it I was diagnosing some problems with it because it went out on me one day but see even back that far that's as far as the neck board would ever go. There's going to, still going to be three-fourths of an inch or so of clearance between there and the back of the cabinet. So depending on how far back I mount this, like right now that's back, I'd say probably about three inches. That should be plenty enough to uh, put a Mortal Kombat style uh, bezel in there and have just a, just a maybe a half inch or so clearance in the front, maybe a little less. So I, I want it, you know, back far enough so that I've got room to put a piece of glass in or plexiglass. This probably will get a piece of plexiglass in it, although my original arcade machines I don't like to substitute plexiglass. I like the original glass. I need to get a new piece for my Mortal Kombat 2 because it had a little bit of uh, a little bit of scratches on there. Somebody had scratched a word into it. Can't really see it but I know it's there. But anyway, I'll come back and show you some clips of other things that I do, uh, you know, cutting wood and gluing and screwing stuff together as I do it. Hey guys, a good while back when I was ordering parts from the main cab, we're talking months back, I uh, ordered some casters. And uh, here's what I got. thought these looked pretty nice and they weren't too huge. Um, I got stationary for the back and ones that rotate for the front. And I made it so uh, they would, uh, you know, it'll make the cabinet pretty mobile, but it will uh, slightly be recessed. If you take a look here, the way I put this bottom in, you remember when I did the video putting the bottom in, and uh, never mind these pieces of wood right here right now. These are some temporary pieces. I'm thinking about putting some extra supports above here. If you remember in one of my old videos where I put the screws across the top and my friend Rod was helping me put this bottom in, um, I made the bottom different than what it usually is. Usually the bottom will go under some of this support right here, up under here, and get support from these um, pieces of wood. And even sometimes they've got, I've seen bottoms that are like dadoed or you know they actually are attached to the bottom and the sides come up off of them 
Well, this one, I wasn't really thinking when I did it, you know, I was just thinking about putting a fresh bottom in there. And if I put these casters underneath it, imagine if these casters are mounted like underneath this piece of wood in all four corners. They're gonna be pushing up on this one piece of wood and the entire weight of the cabinet plus the monitor is gonna be trying to push down against all these screws that are just holding this bottom in. So just the screws alone run into this strip. I know you can't see. Well, maybe you can. There's a strip there, and then there's a, a piece of wood that runs the length of the cabinet to the back. I'll show you at the back. It's easier to see at the back. But right there, there's another piece of plywood that extends all the way up to, you know, just where those little pieces of blocking are. They're, they're about three or four inches long. And uh, my original plans was to take those little small piece of blocking out and put this uh, another strip of plywood in just like this and attach it. Well, it's good and strong for putting the bottom in if the sides are supported, you know, by the entire sides of the cabinet. But if you put those casters up under here and attach them to this bottom piece of wood, it's like it's just like the casters are holding up the bottom piece of wood and the entire weight of the cabinet plus the monitor, which is going to be probably around 300 pounds or so. It might, it might be even a little more than that, but probably around 300 pounds. It's all gonna be pressing down and trying to separate itself from where these screws are holding in. I didn't use any wood glue when I put this in. I can take this back out and put wood glue in to help reinforce it, but I thought maybe an easier way would be to use some strips of wood. And this is just some uh, scrap that come off the old cabinet. It's got some red laminate still on it. But I thought if I had a piece that extended from front to back on each side, like that and probably even longer probably the entire length and I put screws through it you know multiple screws into the side plus wood glue that that would actually give a lot of strength and support to this so it's like as uh, as the weight of the cabinets pushing down this is being held there's no way it's going to move with it the, with these uh, cleats or these pieces of wood you know attached to the cabinet glued to it and screwed to it and it'll be pressing down on this bottom. So it'll be supported from underneath and it'll be supported from on top, both. But that was just some scrap that I was playing with some ideas with. I got plenty more plywood that I can cut, you know, full length strips out of if I need to. And what I thought about doing, if I end up with enough clearance too, uh, let me just turn this piece of wood around here. If I end up with enough clearance, if I leave like, let's say, uh, half or three quarter of an inch, whatever the thickness of the plywood or the wood I'm gonna use like that. If I leave that down here, then we can also make a place up top, you know, somewhere near the top of the cabinet that has a, a piece like that too, and make it to where there's a back that actually inserts inside the cabinet, just like a lot of things like Mortal Kombat stuff. It'll actually set inside the edges of the cabinet and uh, you can have a few screws or something or some type of mechanism to attach it to the back of the cabinet. The only thing keeping me from doing that, the original back on this, was uh, on the outside, so you actually seen the edge of it if you looked at the side of the cabinets. It was on the outside of this. So it was like, it was like sitting like this against the back of the cabinet. And from the sides, if you look from the sides, you would see, you would see that sticking off and it was kind of ugly actually, it was painted white. I don't like that. I wished that I could make it to where the back sits in like that, and so from the side of the cabinet, you, you won't see it. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. But uh, if I end up not having enough clearance for the front of the monitor or the, the neck board on the back of the monitor or something, then you know I'll just go with a real thin sheet of something on the back and uh, paint it black so it won't be that noticeable. It'll be back against the wall anyway. I just don't want it to uh, take away from how nice the, uh, the laminate looks on the side of the cabinet. But anyway, just kinda wanted to show you that, and. Uh, you know, I am thinking of using those casters, so I got I got a whole set here. Got two of the ones that swivel, and two of the ones that are stationary, and make it real easy to move this cabinet around. So hopefully we can use them, and uh, once it's recessed. Once it's recessed, you can see, I mean, there, there's a couple of inches of recess under that cabinet. 
you're only going to see a little bit of these wheels sticking out from under the side of the cabinet. You know, if you just hold it up right here, you see there's about an inch. If you can see that right there is, there's only going to be about an inch of these wheels sticking out. You'll just see probably from about right here down, and um, probably half of that will be buried in carpet because I'm going to have this in a room with carpet on it probably. But it'll leave enough wheel sticking out that this will be real easy to roll around and move. So it ought to work out pretty good. Just showing you a little view of the cab again. I know you guys remember I started doing the uh, control panel. Got the box done. And that's the top. Now usually you would have a piece of metal here. And I may come back and reinforce this with a piece of metal. But for now I've got it cut with a bevel in it so that it accepts the, the angle of the edge of the cabinet there. And I don't know how that's going to work out because this may be a weak point whenever you do a bevel like that. If this keeps getting open and shut, this might start chipping. But if I paint it or seal it with something, then it'll make it stronger. But I may come back and put some type of piece of metal or metal flashing or some type of metal bracket or something over that just to reinforce the side of it. I'm sorry about the noise. That's my air compressor outside kicking off. But anyway, you can see the design. You guys seen this before in one of the old videos. I don't have a hinge on or anything. Everything's just sitting there temporary. But what I need to do, I've got this mocked up so that when I come in and start putting my supports for my monitor and everything, I don't go too low. Because if I go too low and I try to mount that monitor down below this, then, I mean, the screen's either going to stop right dead by the control panel. We don't want that. We want a little bit of a little bit of the bezel to be covering part of that or it's going to drop down below it and we don't want that so we we need to put in some pieces of wood and everything and then uh, I believe I want to use that old piece of wood from the cabinet there you can see it's below the monitor right now it's got a piece of red laminate on one side it's just a piece of uh, plywood but it looks like it would be perfect to make a base to set the monitor on and then mount it to and it even has this piece right here it was a little support piece It'll stop the monitor from going too far back if I mount it in just right. So something else we need to get started mounting on. Just a view from inside the cabinet there with the control panel up front. And all this will probably be painted black on the inside most likely.